crying in the bathroom. <laughs> Real cute little nerdy boy. And then watch ya! Sword. Look at this pug's little booty. Hi everyone. My name is Tia. I am in a bookstore and we are gonna shop. I'm sure this is relatable, but I was reading Sarah Dessen in like fourth or fifth grade when I definitely was not supposed to be reading Sarah Dessen. <laughs> Melt with you. Love can be a rocky road. Are you kidding me? Hot dog girl. <laughs> she has a book called Hot Dog Girl where you see yourself oh this cover is so good if effie's being honest with herself she knows just what she wants she wants to enjoy all the firsts and lasts of senior year with her two best friends as effie learns to speak up and fight for her dreams she'll also decide which dreams are truly worth fighting for what and who will bring her the happiness she deserves i love this cover going on my tbr i just finished this last week and it was hard heart-wrenching so raw please look up trigger warnings like alcoholism drug addiction self-harm please don't read this book without looking at the trigger warnings but i gave it a five star i absolutely loved it i feel like charlie the main character she's like real it was crazy i will definitely be looking into her other books the night in question oh my gosh this looks like something i would read the ivies oh this is on my tbr i think they'd kill to get in. Olivia always knew the Ivies were ruthless. Five senior girls at Claflin Academy who will stop at nothing to get in the college of their dreams. Oh, she's one of them. This looks super fun. This reminds me of, what's that book? They Wish They Were Us. It kind of gives the same vibes already, and I really like that one. I'm still alive. I love this cover. Oh, it's gonna be a movie. Jess's cabin has burned to the ground. The father she was just getting to know is dead, and she's stranded alone. Oh god, I'm reading this soon. That looks so good. I like thrillers like this where there's not some psychopath crazy guy. It's just a really shit situation they have to survive in and you don't know how they're gonna survive. Oh my god, I read all three of these. <laughs> this is the one that I would recommend. Two can keep a secret. Indestructible object. American Royals. I just read this because I really liked One of Us is Next. I was so disappointed. Three stars. And I'm also very surprised that they're coming out with Family of Liars. I read this, but I didn't think it was that good either. I'm surprised that it became so popular and then she came out with this one. Oh, I didn't know she came out with another one. Meet me in the middle. I love these covers. I heard this was so cute. Like a K-pop your name kind of situation. <laughs> boy meets boy. These books, I was honestly really disappointed in. I read them earlier in January of 2023 and I wanted to like them way more than I did. I need to read these, don't I? I've seen these covers on TikTok, I think, but I just haven't gotten around to it. But I think I'm gonna pick these up. As much as the music video changed my life, this book is so bad. Ooh, the Red Palace. To enter a palace means to walk a path stained in blood. Oh my god. You either die or you survive and become another monster within its walls. Isn't that Batman? In her hunt for the truth, she encounters Oijin, a young police inspector also searching for the killer. When evidence begins to point to the crown prince himself as the murderer, Hyun and Oijin must work together to search the darkest corners of the palace to uncover the deadly secrets behind the bloodshed. Going on my TBR for sure. It's set in the 1700s. Oh, I heard that this is really good. Oh my gosh. I ended up giving these away as fun as they were to read. I didn't really like them, but they were fun. So these are written by the same author and they both have love triangles. Why is that? I think that's her favorite trope. I started this, but I haven't really gotten anywhere into it. Hello from here. Oh my God, they're wearing masks. Could staying apart bring them closer together? This is the first pandemic read I've seen in real life, like pandemic fiction. Maxine and Joanne meet in the canned goods aisle just as California is going into lockdown. Max's part-time job as a personal grocery shopper is about to transform into a hellish gauntlet. Jonah's pre-existing anxiety is about to become an epic daily struggle. As Max and Jonah get to know each other through FaceTime dates, socially distanced playground hangs, and the escalating heartbreaks of the pandemic, they're pushed apart by what they don't share and pulled closer by what they do. As thought and honest as it is buoyant, romantic, and funny, here's a novel that looks at the first two months of the quarantine and adds falling in love into the mess. Wow, when I first picked this up, I was like, I definitely do not want to read about that. Like, the COVID pandemic to me was like very depressing and very hard, but this actually, I'm intrigued. Wow, this is not a personal statement. The girl is struggling. Promise, boys? Perfection, excellence, discipline, murder. Oh my god. The urban promise prep school vows to turn boys into men, but when Moore ends up murdered and the cops come sniffing around, the trio emerges as the case 
prime suspects. With all three maintaining their innocence, they must band together to track down the real killer before they're arrested. But is the true culprit hiding among them? Oh my god, was it like the principal or something? I could spend so much time here, this is crazy. Liar's Beach, ooh, will the truth come out? Holiday Proctor, Lyndon's childhood friend, their name is Holiday. Okay, and the only person on the island who knows the truth about him. There's nothing Holiday loves more than a good mystery, and she's convinced there's a murderer on the vineyard. The question is who? I like the cover of this a lot. I honestly have no interest reading the books, but I basically have watched the show by just watching little tidbits on TikTok. I've just watched the whole series in 10 second clips on TikTok. I am Team Conrad. Ride or die. These covers are so good. Best friends Loli and Ryan have earned their nickname the Bonnie and Clyde of Woolridge High. At least until Loli throws the wildest party and has ever seen and meets X, a strange unidentified boy in a coat closet. <laughs> Loli risks losing everything, including her oldest friend. She'll face the biggest danger of all, falling for someone she shouldn't. Going on to my TBR. Aww. Beating heart beats. The boy you always wanted. This is a beautiful cover. Francine always has a plan. Ollie wants no part of it. Ollie generally avoids the odd too blunt and fine, sort of cute. Francine. That's so why the parentheses. But as the tangled lies and feelings pile up, Francine must discover what exactly she needs for herself and from Ollie. Because sometimes the boy you always wanted isn't what you expected. How cute. Holy cow. That is Dawning. Aw, they have the heart stopper leaves on the wall. I don't know what it is about the YA section today, but I could legit stay here forever. Can someone please tell me if they both die at the end is worth it? Because I don't know. Should I read it? Did you like it? The way I used to be. I heard a lot of good things about this one, but please check trigger warnings. We are not from here. The 99 Boyfriends of Mika Summers. Last Chance Books. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. Friends like these. I miss you. I hate this. <laughs> these vibrant YA covers are seriously doing it for me today. I don't know what it is. Like, it's so busy, and I usually don't like very busy covers like this, but that's crazy. Solitaire, Alice Oseman. Oh, I guess that makes sense then. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I definitely want to get into more of Alice Oseman's works because I really did love Heartstopper. Oh, it's a novella. Oh, oh my god. I did not know that this existed. Precious. No, for real though, this book, it was infuriating reading this book. I did not like any of the characters. I literally almost DNF'd this at like 98%. I almost didn't finish this book because of the ending. <sighs> It was definitely way too hyped up for me. So disappointing. These are so pretty. What is going on? I want to read everything. Could you love the boy who stole your chance at fame? Oh, wow. That's a very specific trope. When David quit his band, he missed his shot at fame. Trapped in an ordinary high school life while his ex-best friend Chance became the hottest teen pop star in America. As the mixture of business and pleasure becomes a powder keg, David will have to choose. Is this his second chance at glory or his second chance at chance? Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna add this to my TBR. That last line, is this his second chance at chance? That got me. They're vicious games? Spooky. I love when bookstores have like little trinkets. <laughs> That's so funny. Aww. This is very me. They have a now playing section, which is sick. I have not given the movie a shot. Did you guys like it? I just haven't had a chance because I don't have Prime. <laughs> but I heard it was good. I did enjoy the book. Like, it had me kicking, giggling my feet for sure. I didn't know that August was Women in Translation Month. Stillborn, Cursed <laughs> Bunny Stories. <laughs> out. Story of a brutal murder in the staid Tokyo suburbs. Prejudices women face and the friendships that bolster them. Going on my TBR. People from my neighborhood. I love this cover. What the heck? That is so cute. Details of the local and everyday slip into accounts of duels, prophetic dreams, revolutions, and visitations from ghosts and gods. In 26 palm of the hand stories, fiction small enough to fit in the palm of one's hand and brief enough to allow for dipping in and out. Kawakami crazy a universe ruled by mystery and transformation. I need to read this right now. Sounds so good. Scattered all over earth. Life ceremony. My pen is the wing of a bird. That's beautiful. The section really got me in the lobby of the dream hotel. This is kind of a spooky cover. <gasps> Time's mouth. 
Okay, I love that. I'm already intrigued. It's a poignant and evocative excavation of the bonds that binds families together. Ursa possesses a special gift. She can travel through memory and revisit her past. Oh my gosh. Now a teenager and still heartbroken over the abandonment of the mother she never knew, Opal must journey into her own past to reveal the generations of secrets that give rise to the shimmering source of her family's painful legacy. TBR. The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. <laughs> a map for the missing. Oh god, the sun goes. That is so pretty. The cat who saved books. Thanks, cat. This was very odd. Very, very odd. <laughs> they have bestsellers on the wall. I've heard so much about this book, especially now that I do YouTube and stuff. The Creative Act, A Way of Being. Solito, crying in the bathroom. <laughs> real this was actually really interesting it's about two women who get into like the counterfeit handbag industry it's, like very niche and like very odd and i had a good time reading it i have yet to read an ollie hazelwood book how stunning the one that got away i love the gold and the silver la woman e babbitts i have one of her books that i really want to get to they even have like funky little socks here that is so stinking cute Old Enough by Haley Jacobson. I really want to read this. Old Enough explores queer love, community, and what it means to be a survivor in a post Me Too world. She's written a love letter to friendship and an honest depiction of what it means to find your people. Yeah, I've had this on my TBR because I saw a TikTok about it. Old Flame. I love that cover. Small things like these. This is on my TBR. Ugh, Portrait of a Thief. I'm so glad that I did not purchase this because I was literally gonna buy the special Barnes & Noble's version when it came out. I think in like 2021, right when I got into reading, I ended up borrowing it from the library and it honestly, the writing is so repetitive, it's awful. She repeats the same phrases over and over again, so much so that it's literally distracting. Really disappointed because I wanted to like it. Up with the sun. The boy with the bird in his chest. Santa Monica. Oh, why does this look kind of scary? Oh, it's a thriller. Ooh. Zach Doheny, movie star handsome heartthrob trainer, is found dead on the floor of his gym. The tragedy shocks the town's elites. <gasps> Ooh, okay. It becomes clear that things in this coastal paradise are not as glittering as they seem. Letty, Zach's secret half-sister who works as a housekeeper for the Santa Monica wealthy, holds her brother responsible for a horrific family accident and desperately needs his money to prevent her deportation. Oh my gosh. As these Santa Monica residents begin to crack under the stress of their secrets, one question hangs over it all. What really happened to Zach? Going on my TBR. That is so cool. I've not heard of that one before. Can't look away. This looks pretty. It's 2013 and 23-year-old Brooklyn barista Molly has just locked eyes with Jake, the front man of an up-and-coming southern rock band. They fall deeply in love and it's nearly a decade later. Molly's teaching yoga, living in a Connecticut suburb. Oh, and then her husband Hunter, who's not Jake. <laughs> New version of Jake's songs hit the radio, forcing Molly to confront her past and ask the ultimate questions. What happens when life turns out nothing like we thought it would when we were young and dreaming big? Does growing up mean choosing with your head rather than your heart? And do we ever truly get over our first love? Aww. Going on my TBR. I love going to the bookstore. <laughs> bad for my wallet and bad for my tbr but good for my soul misdemeanor i like the title of this the last party i feel like for some reason lots of thrillers are using this font and using like very neon colors i don't know if that's like what the industry wants right now but there are lots of covers that look very similar to this right now with like a spooky house in the background too wrong place wrong time on my tbr i really want to read it it like messes with time because like someone gets murdered right can you stop a murder after it's already happened every morning you wake up a day earlier another day before the murder with another chance to stop it somewhere in the past lies an answer the trigger for this crime and you don't have a choice but to find it i want to read this so bad gillian wrote something else just another missing person oh i think this is new his weapon isn't a gun or a knife it's a secret her worst one. Oh, spooky olivia 22 years old no history of running away last seen on cctv entering a dead end alley and not coming back out again julia the detective heading up the case she knows what to expect a desperate family, a ticking clock, and long hours away from her daughter. But Julia has no idea how close to home this case is going to get because her family's safety depends on one thing. Julia must not find out what happened to Olivia and must frame someone else for her murder. What would you do? Oh my god. Going on my TBR. 
I love that. Birthday party. I like the cover. I am homeless if this is not my home. This looks heartbreaking. The end of August. It is almost the end of August. Oh, I like this cover so much. That is so pretty. Tokyo Yeno Station. I'm saying that wrong for sure. I like a lot of Japanese literature covers. I feel like they're always very spunky. The All-American. Oh, 17 year old Bucky Yi knows nothing about his birth country of South Korea or his bio dad's disappearance. He can't even pronounce his Korean name correctly. Running through the woods of rural Washington state with the tire tied to his waist, his sights are set on one all American goal to become a college football player. So, when a misadventure with his adoptive family leads the US government to deport him to South Korea, oh my god, he's forced to navigate an entirely foreign version of his life. One mishap leads to another, and as an outsider, Bucky has to fall back on not just his raw physical strength but resources of character and attitude he didn't know he had i want to read this right now that sounds so good and so sad we all want impossible things what napoleon could not do the rachel incident is also on my tbr own hamnet and i need to get to it carrie soto is back daisy jones and the sex whoa matt honey this book is huge <gasps> Stephen Rowley. I need to get to this, but I loved the Gunko. I thought it was so good. The dialogue was so real. The characters are so lovable. He talks to kids as if they're actually people and not kids. Like he doesn't simplify anything. I absolutely loved it. The sense of wonder. This is already on my TBR. Oh, fan fiction. A memoir. <laughs> a, a, a memoir. <laughs> What? Oh, he's an actor. Brent Spinner. Does he write fan fiction or not? That's what I want to know. It's a zany love letter to a world in which we all participate. The wonderful and terrifying phenomenon of fandom. Fan fiction is actually a big reason why I got back into reading like traditional books. There are some amazing pieces of work on AO3 that are just for free. Teenager. Oh, I love the cover. A great artistic high wire act. Oh, silver alert. <laughs> and then he sang a lullaby. This looks very sad. I was looking forward to this, but I've actually seen it's getting negative reviews, which is disappointing, so that sucks. This is on my TBR, definitely. I like this cover. She and her cat. That's literally me. I was sitting exactly like this last night. <laughs> Even the blanket. This is a chonky book. Wayward users. I like this cover so much. Miles, a lead creative at a mid-sized virtual reality company. Ugh, okay, I don't know. Since I'm not really in the tech space, I don't love reading fiction about AI and stuff. In a world rife with an unchecked power and ambition of tech companies, users investigates with both humor and creeping dread how interpersonal experiences and private decisions influence hasty developments and have the power to permanently alter the landscape of human experience. Basically, that is why I'm scared of AI. <laughs> Maybe I will read this. Interior Chinatown. Oh wow, the font, really though. Willis finds himself launched into a world wider than he's ever known, discovering not only the secret history of Chinatown, but also the bare the legacy of his own family. Infinitely inventive and deeply personal, exploring themes of pop culture, assimilation, and immigration. Going on my TBR, it is just getting longer and longer. Bookworm. The paperback is so much easier to hold than the hardcover. The hardcover is almost unreasonable. I see Stuart Woods in every free little library I go, basically. This is so cute. Adult assembly required. Look at this pug's little booty. <laughs> Aww. Laura moves to LA to escape her overprotective family and the haunting memories of a terrible accident. But after an unexpected and fiery setback, she finds herself adopted by a friendly but unusual bunch of folks and installed in their lovely but illegal boarding house. Alright, going on my TBR. This sounds like found family trope, which is one of my favorites. Wow, this is a beautiful cover of Little Women. Look how pretty that is. Patricia wants to cuddle. Oh my god. <laughs> Bunny, I need to read. Blue skies the most precious substance on earth. I wonder what it is. Wow, this is very bright. The camera's not picking it up, but it's like hurting my eyeballs green. A thousand miles to Graceland. This reminds me of the Barbie movie. <laughs> Disorientation. This is on my TBR. I have really wanted to read it. The double life of Benson Yu. Cute little nerdy boy and then whatcha? Sword. I could literally stay here for hours. I've added way too many books on my TBR. <laughs> I had a lot of fun browsing the bookstore. I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.